<laughs> hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and like Dame Dash says, if your work is good and you're honorable, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. You got to keep your head down and move forward because all the negativity is all a test to see if it will distract you. So let's help you keep moving forward with Dame Dash and my take on his top 10 rules of success. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Build your life. Look at me and use me as an example. Um, like you've seen that people have tried every way they can to discredit everything about me from my pocket yep. to my girls to everything. You know what I'm saying? To my family, like everything, everything. And you see that when I'm actually doing things that are good, people try to say I'm doing things that are bad. But at the end of the day, I haven't had to come outside. Right. I haven't had to come out of pocket and do something that was kind of like, you know, against what my morals and my principles are. I've been able to maintain being my own boss, sustain a certain kind of lifestyle, and all because my work is good. So if your work is good and you're honorable, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. You got to keep your head down and move forward because all the negativity is all a test to see if it will distract you. Right. But like, again, if you know it's raining outside and somebody tells you it's not, you're like, yo, I don't care what you say. I'm bringing an umbrella. Right. I don't care what you say. You could call me a clown, all right. the other stuff. I already know because I have this thing where I look to my future. And right. I, I don't look and I don't look to see like, you know, how it starts. I want to know how it's gonna finish. Right. So I'm always doing that. Right. And I always see what I want my life to be and I make sure it's that. Right. And then I art detect that. And then no like it'd be people that have no plan that aren't doing anything are the most distracting. Right. They're the ones that speak the loudest because if you're doing something, you don't have time to be worried about somebody else. Right. You don't have time for jealousy if you're doing something. You're too tired doing what you're doing. Right. So if you're sitting around thinking, that means you should be doing some action. Right. So that's your fault. So then the overcompensation comes for blaming somebody else for the reasons why you don't want to move. Rule number two, be respectful. I'm not that dude that says, if you do this, this will happen, and then it doesn't happen. You're just sitting around waiting. You yeah. do the right thing. In my in my world, you do the right thing. Like, if his dream was literally to sit and play his album for Kanye, I watched his dream yeah, come true. Which right. it was. And it happened in a week <laughs> only because he did the right thing. Right. Yeah. You know, if his dream, like he said, his dream is to sit here and do an interview, I, I, that happened because he listened. Respect will make your dreams come true. And respect is not convenient. It's not when it feels good. It's when it makes you uncomfortable. When, you know, someone feels like, damn, I, I don't agree with him, but because I respect him, I'm going to do what he says anyway. That's respect. And I'm not going to say a f word about it. Rule number three, have multiple sources of income. What's your theory behind having multiple different <laughs> avenues working at the same time? Okay, imagine this. <laughs> imagine your number one artist after his first album saying, I quit. That's Jay-Z. <laughs> Jay-Z quit after, what do you mean? He retired it's after yeah, Reasonable Doubt. supposed to be his first and last album. Did he? Yeah, it's supposed, yeah. supposed to be his first 15 and last album. 15 albums later, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, from that day, I was like, well, I ain't depending on this nigga. <laughs> we'll build a roster. What? <laughs> well, how long did he retire though? Like, well, like a, a month? He had I don't know, volume man. one. He didn't retire. Nah, he big pass. Retired. He just he passed it in volume nigga, one. How many yeah. retirements did this nigga do? A lot. All right. So, uh, well, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I lost count of how many times he retired. <laughs> so that that and that, I don't even care. That pushed you. That pushed you to just diversify. Yeah, it was like nineteen. <laughs> Damn, that was that young. It, it, it wasn't only that. It was just that. I was a guy that just thought I could do everything better. So it was like, I'm fresher than Ralph Lauren. I know it. I met this nigga. I'm fresher than him. I know I am. I know I'm cooler than Harvey Weinstein. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I done shook this nigga down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he's, he's, not my, the, he's not the only one. It's my little man. <laughs> you know? I, I see what Charlie, you know, all these dudes, Charlie Watts, Leo Cohen's, I'm like, this nigga? You know what I'm saying? Y'all scared of him? It's my little man. Rule number four, be ready. Some people try to dumb you down as a distraction just to f cause they just don't wanna, f they don't wanna work. People are so scared of thinking and so scared of action. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm about. I'm about thinking things through and action. They don't have the wherewithal to see their ideas into fruition and to be tangible and to be real. They, and, and they don't they don't think that getting to where they want to go is going to be difficult. It's, How it's, difficult it's is it really? Game. It's huge. It's boxing. It's getting yeah. punched in the face to win. Yeah. That's what it is. To, you know, to practice, you're hitting that bag, but you're getting hit. Like you got to spar to yep. get where you got to go. So you're going to feel broke. 
You're going to have to feel anxiety. And if that doesn't make you feel comfortable, then it's going to be hard to be an entrepreneur. But you got to know when you get in the game that you're going to get tackled. You got to get up. You got to work wounded. You got to stay positive. And you got to care about your other people sometimes, most of the times, before you care about yourself. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number five, architect your bubble. I only like to be around cool people. I, I, I've always architected my bubble. I only want to be around cool opinion leaders, like-minded people and I filter and I edit people. Rule number six, have a point of view. You have to have a point of view and you have to have a voice and you have to be unapologetic. And when you do that, you don't stand in a crowd because most people just want to fit in. Just yeah. being different is a win in this world. Everyone is just only feels confident in a crowd. So when someone does stand out, it's different. Rule number seven, don't worry. I don't have time to be worried because I'm always if, like if I feel something's giving me anxiety, I go fix it. Right. Or else if I let it rest in me, it, you internalize it. It causes like sickness and sickness. cancer. Yeah. So that's another thing is you know I laugh a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know me. I, yeah. I, I don't. I would. I my every day is therapy because I hold nothing. Yeah. And what people have to understand is if you hold it in, when you go to therapy, you're gonna have to get dark before you get light anyway. That's yeah. therapy. Yeah. So the reason why I get dark real fast is so I could get light yeah, real get fast. Yeah. Light real. Quick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I could be like. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like <laughs> right. I, I, I don't hold no luggage. Right. You know what I mean? Like when people ask me questions, I'm going to answer it. Yeah. I'm going to address the elephant in the room. On. But they ain't going to f*** my day up. Yeah, yeah, So like just in that moment, you ask me about flex. Yeah, I got like, you know, engaged for a second. Yeah. I spoke about it. Yeah. But and we move off it. We off it. Rule number eight, take care of yourself. If you bit with the entrepreneur bug, you're always going to want more. But self-care is important. Hmm. Make sure you get some sleep and make sure you celebrate yourself and make sure you're enjoying yourself. You know, I'm a firm believer in I would never do anything and get paid for it unless I would do it for free. So you didn't pay me for this, mm. but I could get paid for this. Rule number nine, be prepared. What I'm telling you is this, by me saying do not perform over a track, like I gotta see a live show, like I have a whole 5,000 square foot facility where you can rehearse before I can even co-sign you. That's actually educating into what the fundamentals of hip hop, what the oh, fundamentals yeah. of mu real music is. And a lot of people cannot step up to that challenge. Cause it feels so different, right? It's just because, well you have to rehearse. It's, it's, it's like eight hours a day to get good. It's not anything easy. That's you can't hide. You cannot hide. And you know, also you can't trust everyone's sound system. So if the track doesn't play correct with the mic, it sounds terrible. And you never want your music to be heard terrible. Your purpose of performing live is so people want to be vested in you and buy your merch and you know keep a connection with you. So you have to show one hundred percent. Be prepared at all times. And if you're not prepared, like we get a hit record tomorrow. And you've never done a show, but you're going to have to perform at the radios like, you know, a uh, summer jam where there's 50,000 people and you come out there unprepared, you're getting booed. That can end your career, a bad show. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips is focus on yourself. I care about people to a certain extent, but I can't care about you when you care about yourself. Mm -hmm. I can bring you awareness and I can leave you with that, but I'm up in the hills, bro. I, you know, I, I don't see it all here. I choose to help because I love, because I love myself. See, unless you love yourself, you don't know how to love nobody else, period. Right. You can't tell me how to love if you don't love yourself. Just like you can't tell me how to get money if you ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? You can't tell me to be at peace if you're not at peace. You want to help everybody else, but you drown it. I don't understand it. Focus on yourself so that you can really help somebody. And that's the problem with people. They try to use that shit as an excuse. So many people, I say, what's your dreams? Oh, to help people. But you crack broke. What's that? Your dream should be not to, be, to, to take care of your children and make sure your girl is taken care of. That's your dream. So that... They never have to work. And then you go help everybody with the money you made. Yeah. But it hurts you to help people. Relationships should be based not on money. It should be based on that person being solid, being honorable. 100%. A relationship in this business is always based on how good you're doing. Me and you know, if your mother, the minute that Wildin' Out got off the air. Right. And the turban went to the side. And <laughs> no one's 
with you. <laughs> facts. All facts. No matter how nice you are, <laughs> right? And how good you, it don't matter. That's what I know. This is what I know from the street. If your work is good, you ain't got to promote it. People will stand online and you can tell them that you're not taking singles. You right. understand what I'm saying? And you can right. be like, get out of it. Your, if your work is good, right. people will come to you. Right. It doesn't matter how you are. I see people act really nice. Okay. Have really terrible work. Right. And get on. Right. I see back people act really terrible and have great work. Right. And no one says. So then that's. Look, so- with, look, at, look at the situation now. Look at Weinstein. Right. Look at R. Kelly. Right. Everybody was looking the other way, right? That is wild wait, wait, too. Wait, but yeah. why? So then you got to ask yourself that question. Right. Why you still was listening to Holmes music and you still knew? Right. Why were you still going to Homie's movie and you knew? Right. We all knew it. I flipped on all of them. Right. And all of them. I wouldn't make movies, none of that. Even down to that Fiesta stupid shit everybody talking about. Right. I wasn't in no scene with Homie. Right. I was like, yo, I'm not getting no scene with Homie. Right. Period. You don't see it. You're looking for it. You never find it. That so, was conscious. Right. How do you stay motivated and not get burned out? I only do what I love. You got to do what you love. You can't get burnt out. And I do get burnt out. You know, once I'm in the business and I don't enjoy it no more, that's the thing. I can't, it's hard for me to stay in the business for a long period of time because the people tend to make me sick. So as soon as I start to get aggravated, you know, it's like I'll be on the block. If the block starts to make me mad, I go to another block. (laughs) Even if I got the block clicking, it's just like I won't compromise my quality of living. You know what I'm saying? But like right now, what I'm doing is, you know, I'm building things that I could pass to my kids, but only things that I love and and my family. So I love making movies. I'm making movies. I love it. I don't think I'm going to be burnt out with that anytime soon, you know? And then also when you're in the business of making money off other people, that person can make you sick and you don't want to make money off them no more. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I try to only make money off myself these days and also do things that, you know, my my girl or my wife, Rocky, if she's inspired, then we'll do that business. And like some revolving my children, I'll do that business. But I worked hard to put myself in that position. Did, was there some pivotal moment for you in your life where you just really got it and, and something happened, a fire ignited inside you that made it so that you had all the moving parts to make this amazing career unfold? I think the death of my mother probably got me really focused and I understood that there wasn't going to be anyone there to take care of me. I had to take care of myself. And just out of respect for her life and all the things she did to make me a better person, I had to apply all those things. So, you know, at like 17, my mother died when I was 16 and 17, you know, I was running the streets so heavy and it was getting so critical that I put myself in boarding school. You know, I figured out how to get a scholarship and because of the ability that my mother gave me to articulate what's on my mind, to read, to write, you know, to not be afraid. And also I was, you know, boxing. So I got, went to the boys club and they were giving out scholarships for, you know, you took a test, I passed the test and, you know, I made it. And uh, I, would, I was just always able to, to put myself in a better place. I, I never let anybody else control my destiny. My mom's taught me to uh, make things happen on my own, not to depend on anybody. And if I have an opinion, to speak on it. As a professional, the only way to be a professional is to work harder than everybody. A professional, like a, a professional baseball player, a boxer, is someone that's better than everyone else. That's why he gets paid so much to do it. That means work. It ain't nothing professional going to get given to you. There's some sacrifice. There's always pain. And, you know, it's always going to be dark times because that's part of business. Every time you create a new business, you got to struggle a little bit. And it takes a while to build a brand. It takes about five years to be consistent. Like my first five years, you know, I'm not saying nothing different. I've been saying the same exact stuff. If you go look at um, 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 backstage and any kind of argument I had, it's always been consistent. It's just people weren't ready for it. They didn't trust it. But after I've been saying it for 10 years or five, you know, five to 10 now, it's a brand. I have a brand for it. I'm consistent. I back it up. I'm still here. I'm still up. Even when, you know, being an independent meant looking like you was down. Failing is never failing. It's always a learning experience. So yeah. the thing about business is how deep your pocket is. I always say that. Like, if you got a lot of money, you can sustain these losses until they turn into gains. But if you have a short paper, if your money's not long, or if you don't have enough, you have to make sure that those losses don't kill and compromise your pocket. And you know at, what I'm at that point, you got to get creative. But when you do anything, you get better at it the more you do it. And the first time you do anything, you usually don't do it correct. So it's not failure. It's learning experience. If you would get up and it's like in a fight, the first round, you might get knocked out. Right. But by the last round, you get up and knock that person out. Who won right. the, You, you might have lost a round, but you win the whole fight. You, you got to lose some rounds in business. But at the end of the day, you want keep that going. unanimous decision. You got to keep going. You got to finish the fight. The question is, do you have the stamina to finish? But you get on the web and you check out who's Dame Dash and there's so much crap. 
How do you deal with that, and how do you suggest other people deal with it when they reach a certain level of celebrity? I mean, when you sign on to being a certain level of celebrity, you got to know they're going to say things, and you know things are going to get eyeballs and and get people to buy. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I just I really don't care. And one of the reasons why I think I've been successful is because I didn't care. If I cared, I probably would be too scared to promote people that people don't want to promote. You know, it, it takes fearlessness to be first. You know, to not move with a crowd, to move alone, you know, and you get scrutinized by people that do move with a crowd because they got to make you look bad to make themselves look good. It's all part of the game. It's like a guy that's in high school that gets all the girls. The rest of the dudes hate him in high school. So my whole life has been being that guy in high school that everyone hates because I keep taking their girls. <laughs> I can understand that. It's not yeah. a bad life. So that's how I look at it. The, the, the price of success is unsuccessful. People don't like you. Who cares? Like, um, successful people don't care about what another person is doing. Successful were, people want everybody else to, to succeed, be succeed too. Exactly, that's my point. You know, point. that's this whole mindset that people don't understand. Right, so it's usually a bunch of unsuccessful, bitter, bitter, bitter people. And you know, I was a guy in school that, you know, was, got kicked out of every school. I was the class clown. You know, I, I wasn't the guy that you would traditionally think would be, go this far. So me making it made all my teachers look stupid. Every principal that kicked me out of school looked stupid. You know, I went to South Kent in Connecticut um, on scholarship, I didn't come back the next year. The next time I came back was on a helicopter and I landed it on the, the soccer field. You know, the, when I got kicked out of Dwight um, in the, the seventh grade, you know, my son came back and they were asking me, you know, I put my son through there. I paid full tuition plus extras for tutoring and they asked me to build a library. I'm like, the same principal that kicked me out is asking me to build a library. So it's egg on all their faces. You know, er, my success makes a lot of people look like they were wrong because a lot of people articulated the fact that I wouldn't be what I am today. And either way, either way, I didn't care, but I think it's kind of funny, it's egg all over their face, scramble. I think entrepreneurship is in everyone, but not everyone has a discipline for it. But anyone can be an entrepreneur, but not everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. Some people rather depend on other people because they feel like they don't have to work as hard. But being an entrepreneur means working hard. It means embracing struggle. It means being a leader. It means never sending somebody to do something that you wouldn't do yourself. A real boss would never send somebody to do something they wouldn't do themselves. A boss that tells somebody to do something that they wouldn't do is not a boss, he's a coward. And I, I, that, 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 those principles came to me from the people I knew in the street. Right. So somebody gonna be like, yo, kill that nigga for me, but you, nigga, you kill me yourself. I know all about it. You understand that. what I'm saying? Yeah, but if you're you yeah. a guy that be pushing buttons, but you won't do nothing, yeah. you're not a real boss. A business plan that about a business that doesn't exist is a lie because you can't you can't say like what are your facts based on because it hasn't happened yet you can't really determine who's going to buy what and how much it's going to sell you can't say I'm going to make a million this year did you make a million right. last year yeah. no but what I'll do is put together what I, it's like a script I'll put together how I'm going to make the goods how I'm going to market the goods how much it's going to cost to buy the goods with, with how, what's my margin and then when I'm going to sell it and then how much I'm going to put back into the business and how much I'm gonna put in my pocket. Right. You know, it's that kind of thing. You know, I, I write things out like, if you look on the, look on the, um, put that on the wall right there, right? If you can see it. You see the, the, the piece of paper, all that on the, on the, on the that's what I gotta do. You know, I, I, I like to put things on the wall. I can either know what I gotta do, I need to look at it, I need to cross it out. I don't consider that a business plan per se, but I have a plan, you know what I'm saying? Like I have a plan plus, you want other people to understand the plan because you can't do anything on your own, so you want to be able to articulate it to them a way they understand and that they can look back at it because I talk quick. And like you said, a lot of times I say like, I didn't understand that. You're not going to tell me until 10, a year later, you know? So you want to have something someone can keep looking at and they can see you crossing it off and then they can kind of get it by absorbing calls, you know, by, by watching what you're doing. You know, I support the arts and I give people platforms. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, a, a real person that is, is supposed to be a leader is supposed to serve the people. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to be worried about yourself. You know what I was, I, I've been thinking about lately? You notice that in the music business, traditionally, it's the businessman that's robbing the artist. And they always, the artist ends up with the with the behind the stories of where they are now. Oh, where they at now, nobody All can All my artists that I ever touch are rich. They doing well and I'm the one that's always looking broke. Why? I, isn't that weird? It's because I give it all away. I'm not trying to take an artist and have him in my pocket for his life and jerk him and have him resent me. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to get him out of my pocket and be like, look, man, go win. Go eat. Go be yourself, but leave me alone. 
You know, and the one thing you have to really never do is compare yourself to other people. Absolutely. That's the one thing you can't do is judge Absolutely. your success to someone else's. Because a lot of people are willing That's to do... That's what social media does, man, to people, man. Looking at people's pages and you like, damn, it could. man, I just... You it know, could. Like, that's a part of it. If you're insecure, yes. Yeah. If you're insecure, social media could destroy you. And there's a lot of people that think that the only way you can make it, especially in our business, the entertainment industry, that, you know, you can't be an honorable honest, hardworking person. You've got to be willing to do whatever it takes, regardless of how you compromise your own ethics, to get to wherever it is you want to get. And I've never believed that. And it doesn't sound like you believe it either. Nah. You know, I don't consider that a win. I consider that cheating, and I can't live with myself if I don't play the game right. But other people don't. Like, you go into different cultures, and especially in business, it's like, yo, you got to win any way you can. If somebody's slipping and you don't take advantage of it, you're dishonoring your family. Like, I've been in cultures like that, mm -hmm. you know, where lying is okay for yeah. the business. You know, you're supposed to do that or else you're a sucker. So, you know, it's just a matter of perspective and the cloth you're cut from. And, you know, it, it's a rougher world when everyone is cheating and you're playing the game right. You know, it's a tough world. But at the end of the day, it's worth it because, you know, there's nothing more valuable than your soul, your integrity, your freedom, you know, just being proud of yourself. I just don't feel like, you know, when you, you, you can't call yourself a winner if you're cheating, you know, you're a cheater. You know, I, I, that's just how I feel. And you might not get caught in the human form, but God will get you. You can't hide from God or whatever the supreme being is. You know what I mean? Yeah, but a go-getter or when you're telling somebody to eat the food they killed, that's the same thing as saying you got to put up your own money. Like, a lot of people would be like, yo, I need a check. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I need to, I have to pay my bills. So they won't take any chances. They'll do minimal. Actually, they'll try to escape work. They'll live for a Friday just so they could just pay those bills or be in debt. But when you tell somebody to eat the food they kill, they got to go out there. They got to work. They got to win. And if they don't make money, they don't pay their bills. But to me, it's a non-option. I'm going to make my bread. At a young age, I remember getting yelled at in, in nursery school. Like I was four or five and I felt this feeling of embarrassment. And at that moment I was able to identify that feeling and I was like, I will never let myself feel embarrassed again. So from then on, nothing- At that young an age? Yeah, at, at, I would just, you know, I didn't like the feeling. Like I felt funny, I felt like I was shrinking. Like, you know, when Fred Flintstone gets yelled at and you get smaller? Yeah. I didn't like anybody making me feel smaller just by, by the energy of their voice. So it was almost like I put this repellent on where nothing could embarrass me, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I just never really cared. And I never wanted to be a part of a crowd. I always wanted to be an individual. I hated when everybody looked the same. So it was like, it was corny to me to like, to, to like something because somebody else liked it. So I was like that guy that was like, if you like it, I'm not gonna like it. You know, I always wanted to be first, never be last. I never wanted to like follow a trend. I've always wanted to start it. And I think that comes from the Harlem swag and all that. And that confidence is what made me not really care. So when I would speak about things that no one else was speaking about or if I was going to do something that no one else did I embraced that loneliness you know because it meant I was doing something right where other yeah, people scared of standing right out there on your and own. and as a result of it because I would always give 100 fearlessly and stand behind my point of view I always got the reception that I thought that I deserved which was you know being able to have the life that I wanted again recognize what really makes you happy if you feel like you're losing, you're losing. It doesn't matter what other people feel. So I know how it feels to be perceived as winning and be feeling like, uh, I'm losing. I stopped living according to what people wanted me to do. I started living according to what actually made me happy. Like if you're in a situation that don't make no sense, then get out of it. Don't make it make sense. One plus one always equals two. If you're not happy, change your life. Fight, expect, expect to be uncomfortable. And if you're not devoting between eight and 12 hours a day on your craft, then you're not really trying to be a professional. Right. Like you gotta realize you, you're trying to be competitive. Being a professional means being the best in the world. That's, that doesn't just come with skill, that comes with discipline. Right. You know, that means you have to have a certain kind of work ethic. That means you're doing things that most won't. Right. People really don't understand it. Like they think they got skills, so everything's gonna come to them. Skill is actually like a curse. I've seen people with no skill that realize it and understand that they have to work hard to get this skill, work so hard that they do better than the people that have skill yeah. and that are arrogant and entitled that feel that it should just come to them and then they just become a waste. Right. You know, having potential is if you don't realize it. Right. It becomes corny. Like you're the cool guy when you have potential, but like 10 years later, if you don't realize it, then you're the corny guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and I never want to ever be that guy. What does it truly mean to be independent? Just to be able to do whatever I want to do whenever I feel like it. 
You know right. what I'm saying? Like, I, I couldn't imagine, like, that's why I hated school. I just, you know, and I'm not saying people should hate school, but I just couldn't stand a teacher that I didn't think was cool or smarter than me telling me what to do. And then I had to sit there and listen. For anybody who actually has that fear, like that wakes up and they deal with that fear and they go into a job and they're in between deciding if they're just gonna go out and be independent or not, like what are your words for them? I would say blindly do it. Quit and, f and figure it out. The more uncomfortable it makes me feel, the better. You right. cannot be great comfortable, right. ever. See, the one thing a boss has to realize is your job isn't to take care of yourself, your job is to take care of other people. So that means you have to completely be selfless. Right. If you're selfish at all, you're not a boss. Right. If you don't have the ability to care about other people before yourself, you're not a boss. Right. People practice being bosses every day because they're parents. You know, you care more about your child than you care about yourself. That's like your business. That's what a boss does. You know, I've had to pay my staff before I pay my own bills right. because they did the work. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Right. That's what a boss does. So people who take the leap and they make that first, they take that first passion and build a business or they start something, but they have other talents or other disciplines that they want to build things around. How have you managed to build multiple companies or take that blueprint and apply it to different areas and manage that? It's because I look at all the little companies as marketing for one company. Hmm. When I make a movie, I got to make the movie, right? So I got to do that. But also, after I make the movie, I gotta distribute the movie, so I'm gonna build the platform, like Dame Dare Studios or whatever app, I'm gonna distribute it, right. you know what I'm saying? Then while you're watching the movie, like you gotta wear clothes, I wear clothes. I like to make clothes, I have the ability to do it. I was in the fashion business, still am. So I make all the clothes, it's a commercial right. for the clothes. I like music, but not in a traditional sense. I don't wanna monetize and exploit artists, but I do have a deep catalog of music that I've made while I was just inspired in the moment. I could use the music in the movie, so now you can sell the music, you sell in the fashion, people drink, right? So why won't you drink the liquor that I make? I make the liquor. So then now you can, you know, drink the liquor. But right. if you, I'm just saying, so everything you see, I feel like I want to make because I have the ability to do it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I do it. So I basically leverage the things that people pay for. That's what I use for marketing. So I've always looked at, look at Rockwear, look at State Property. When I have a movie called State Property, the, you got clothing called State Property, you have an album called State Property. State Property did 20 something million in clothes that year just because of the commercial right. that the movie presents. Why would I pay somebody to do something I could do myself? Like why am I gonna pay a bodyguard when I could fight? What I try to do when I start companies is learn every single job before we start hiring. So for example, with Dame Dash Studios, I actually got Boogie running Dame Dash Studios and Raquel, you know, editing and posting and doing the thing so that when they hire somebody, they'll know what to tell them to do and they'll know how long it takes and they'll know if that person's doing their job or not. That's smart. It's like you gotta work the cash register first. Independence is priceless. It's just people that have never had it don't even understand. And I don't even expect them to, you know. And independence means usually putting up your own dough. You have to put up your own money. That's independence. If someone else is putting up the money, that's dependence. You understand what I'm saying? Now you got to move when they say move. You have to ask. You have to be nice. You have to laugh at jokes that aren't funny. You know what I mean? You have to be around a racist and let them say little things, little cute things. A nerd square that wouldn't survive in the street. And independence is like being... Like, let me tell you the perspective of someone that's independent. If there's like a, a, a wild dog and he has to literally eat the food he kills, he cannot eat unless he kills something that day. And then there's a dog that's tame, he lives in a house, but he has three square meals a day. He gotta do tricks, he gets petted, he gets kicked out, he gets beat, he gotta get walked, he walks on a leash. When that dog comes in the room with the wild dog, the wild dog is laughing. He doesn't care that you're in a mansion. He doesn't care that you eat steak every day. He still thinks you're a herd. He knows he can take from you because he knows he has to kill every day to eat. You know what I mean? And that's a confidence, that's a rock star. And that's the one thing that I know I will never give up. <laughs> you know, the ability to be that. Like I laugh at anyone that's a caged dog, you know, walked on a leash, told when to eat, and does tricks and rolls over for a check. Why is it so hard to bet on yourself? For a lot of people, like what's the hard? Why why is that so hard for people to do? To pull up their own money and bet on themselves Cause when they see it really works out eventually. Because because when you put up your money, that's a struggle, and a lot of people don't just want to walk into a struggle. 
you know, it's like some people don't, even though they could fight, they're not really, you know, have the, the discipline to go to training camp and really focus and, and, and see it through. And like, they don't want to walk into the, to the struggle to win. You have to, to want to win means you have to embrace pain. You have to em- embrace struggle. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to know that nothing's going to be easy in order to be the best at it in the world. You have to do it and push yourself where most people won't. You know what I'm saying? And you got to be up for that, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, if you up for it, you could do it. But not everybody's up for it. Yeah. Like not everybody really, they, and con- conceptually they want it, but do they want the pain it takes to go get it? Right. And I have a lot, like, there's people that, I, like, there's things about them I don't like, but I respect the fact that they're going to fight to get what they want. Mm-hmm. The fight. And it's regardless fight. of whether the, our perspective is different or not, that fight, every time, whether it's wrong or right, yeah. the person that fights the hardest wins. You really ultimately know that if you really believe in yourself and you work hard at it, you'll achieve it. The question is, am I ready to work so hard that I'm better than everyone else? You understand what I'm saying? And you have to answer that question within yourself. Am I ready to embrace all the pain that nobody else wants to embrace? Am I ready to really work harder and do it so much that I'm better at it than everyone that does it? It's really about the work ethic, really. It's a professional work ethic. You can't just be good at something. You have to be able to, to see things through and do the things that you don't enjoy. It's not really about the things that you enjoy. That's the easy part. It's the things you don't enjoy. That's the things that people usually shut down about. They just don't like it. It's just because you don't like something doesn't mean it's a failure. What I do is I'm a businessman, right? In any business, the more crowded it is, the harder it is to do it. So I never want to hustle on a crowded block. So regardless of what, I'm always looking to do something that nobody's doing. So all I was looking at was what's the next wave logically. It was just logically. I was paying attention. You know what I'm saying? So once I realized it, I was like, it's the internet? This freedom was ridiculous. And plus, like, it was like, damn, if I know how to make myself, like, content is like currency. It's the thing that makes money forever and ever. It's, a, it's like... It's like when somebody smokes a joint, the weed is gone. You got to grow more weed. When somebody looks at something, you can pay over and over again to see it, and you ain't got to keep making it. I just look at what people pay for and do it myself. I'm the plug. I'm never a customer. Do it yourself and leverage your own celebrity. Right. So instead of letting somebody else make it, we make it, and then we don't have to pay for the marketing. It's easy. So right. now that I'm a brand for doing that, I can now completely invest in myself. But there's two games. One yeah. is making good work. And one is leveraging celebrity. Right. The good work, you ain't got to move. Good work, they find you. You ain't even got to promote your destination. Mm-hmm. When you ain't doing too good, that's when there's the overcompensation. You start right. hitting red carpets every day and doing other to distract the fact that you have no talent. You understand what I'm right. saying? Confidence and not giving a is the, it makes you so lean. Like, the don't give a factor. That makes it where you don't care what people think. You never feel like you're being judged. You never want to be a part of a crowd. And you just, you know, you just feel it's about the way you feel about things, you know, and then also you got swag, you know, you just, you just do what you want regardless of what people think. But uh, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough, you know. What's tough and initially? You know, well, it's when you when you when you're brand new to independence, it's, just, it's, it's, just, it's, it's a mind state. Yeah, it's a mind state. It's a tough mind it, it state. It depends on what you value as wealth. Right. Like if you value your freedom mm-hmm. and your happiness as ultimate wealth, or if you value perception and physical things as right. ultimate wealth, you're either gonna like physical things is temporary, so you're gonna hustle for the temporary, yeah. or you're gonna help hustle for the forever. Your right. soul is forever. Absolutely. You know, you, you don't want to cash that out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? For right. temporary things, for physical right. You know what I mean? I think that's the ultimate test. It's like, yo, are you going to really be wealthy? Meaning, are you going to be happy? Or are you going to look happy? You know what I'm saying? Are you going to worry about how people see you and buying physical right. things that make you look better than you are? Or do you really want to really feel good? So how do you want to make money? I just want to... This is what I do, right? Take yourself to five years. Where do you want to be in five years? See, the thing about it is, to shoot a movie, you need a script, right? You can't just freestyle it. You can't say, I want to say this, or kind of like that. You got to be very direct. And then you put all your energy to what you want. You visualize it, and then it has to happen. I'm a filmmaker, so... So you want to make movies? Yeah, I want to make... I mean, I've done that, but I want to do it to where I don't have to worry about a regular job. Yeah. This is the way I would do it. So I would make as many short films as I can, just so people can start seeing that you're good. I would star in the movie if I want to be in it or in the short film. Like, a real artist is someone that's damn near obsessed with it like a painter should be painting eight hours a day a, a, a band should be rehearsing eight hours a day if you're a businessman you should be doing your business eight hours a day so if you're focused on something and you're doing it eight hours a day then you're doing it at a professional level but you got to know what you focused on and then you can take things into your own control it doesn't happen overnight it's not easy expect pain Expect anxiety, expect everything to go wrong, and just be cool. Breathe easy, and then just see it out. 
Because a lot of people start but don't finish when things don't happen the way. It's never gonna happen the way you want it to happen, ever. And if it does, do not trust it, it's the devil. There were so many amazing talented performers that came out of New York in the late 80s and early 90s. Mary J, Big E, Jay-Z, The Firm, Wu-Tang, and you were like a big part of that. Did you realize at the time how big that movement was going to be and then what it was going to mean for the rest of the world and the rest of the music scene? Yeah, I did. I did. You could feel it at the time? Yeah. Every, every, I knew that. That's why I was the person that was documenting everything because I knew everything I was doing in that moment was legendary. So the way I would look at it, it would be like, damn, could you imagine if you had Jimi Hendrix and David Bowie and John Lennon before they cracked or Mick Jagger in like a studio or just kicking it before they got famous and then imagine when they did. So because I was so confident in everything I was doing and all the people around me, I knew that what we were doing would probably set the stage for history, you know what I'm saying? I didn't think anybody was cooler than us and I knew it actually and it, you know, it turned out I was right. You know, in Harlem, I'm from Harlem, we had a crew called The Best Out and we used to throw parties. And um, at the Cotton Club, we had Kick Capri DJ and we used to make t-shirts and we had our names on them and we used to have basketball games. And a lot of people tried to do what we were doing. We were emulated. Like, I, I remember when we were throwing our basketball games, it would be like us, the best out versus Kev Chow's crew, they were called Boss and it was crazy at the Gaucho gym. And then the next thing I would see Puff do a basketball thing, but you know, it ended up being tragic. But I knew that he was influenced by what we was doing. So I've always so seen how my influence has been on the rest of the world from day one. And it still is like that. Loyalty is not convenient. If you only, you can't just be loyal when it's like easy. Convenient. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if there's a bag of money, but you got to do the wrong thing and be disloyal to somebody, we walk it. Oh, I don't want any friends. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And just you know, so sometimes uh, you know, respect to me guides you and, and 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 protects you from everything. If you if you lead with respect on on anything, the right things will happen. You understand? Like, I've never seen respect put anyone in, in harm's way. I've only seen respect always, always um, protect you. And, and then also the ultimate test is always like to disrespect the people you love to get something physical, like some bread. You understand what I'm saying? That's the test, you know what I mean? And tests aren't meant to be easy. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what my test would always be. It would be like, am I gonna play my culture or am I gonna get that dollar? You know what I'm saying? And I just couldn't do it. You know, I might gonna play my family. As many times you know, I'm sure you could have played the all culture. All the time. Yeah. All the time, you know that was my problem with the music business because it was such a, 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 a it was such a disloyalty to my culture to exploit it the way it was being exploited and letting other cultures exploit it and not saying nothing and being like it's alright just because I'm making money so just because I'm alright makes it all, you know because I I fought through it it still didn't make it alright to just sit there and watch them all the rest of the culture to me that's why I always fought for it. you know what I mean there was like guilt with it always you know what I mean just being around people I didn't want to be around. When people make me the underdog, it's funny because they don't understand what the game I'm playing. Just because I'm not playing your game, or just because I'm not moving at the pace you're moving, it don't mean I'm wrong. You know what I'm saying? Your win ain't the same win as mine. And it's never been. Like, what I've always, like, when someone thought a record deal was dope, I was like a label deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got the, you got a, a record deal, you should have a label deal. You know, you might have a TV show, you should have a network. You know, that's just how I think. I have boss thoughts. I'm always thinking boss. 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 I don't, I don't know what chapter right there. Boss thoughts. I, I, I don't calm down. Yes. I, I don't I don't know any other I don't I don't know any other language but boss boss yeah. language. You know what I'm saying? So when people don't talk in boss to me, I don't know what they're saying. You know what I'm saying? It's a language. It's there's approach. It's a language. It's a like like people approach things like bosses and people approach things like workers. A lot of people don't want to be bosses because there's so much responsibility that come with it. Yeah. You understand? They're scared right. of it, and I always say that. You understand what right. I'm saying? Right. But a boss only can think about it in boss terms. So if somebody says they want to get in business, some people might say, oh, I need somebody to give me a job. That's not a boss thought. Right. A boss says, if I want to get in business, my thought is, if I want to get in business, I'm going to create the business. Figure I'm going to buy the do business. It. You right. understand what I'm right. saying? Then I'm going to do the business, but I'm not trying to be hired. Man. My approach is always going to be bossy. You know, someone that's not used to being a boss, his, his thought process ain't bossy. Fluent he don't boss. have boss thoughts. Fluent boss. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, fluent and boss. And if you don't talk to me in boss, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> For real. Be like, huh? And people, be be like, and, and, and people will think you're an yeah. asshole because they're like, no, that's not how I post right. things. Right. You understand what right. I'm saying? I, that's, I'm not celebrating that, yeah. <laughs> that you got a when job. You hear boss talk, it's like, I speak that. Yeah. I speak you, that language. You, you can tell when somebody else talks boss. 
just by their approach on things. And someone that talks boss doesn't speak any other language. I only talk boss. The minute I had daughters, I was like, I gotta change everything. I can't do anything to a girl that I don't want another man to do to my daughter. So that was a real turning point for you? The daughters, for sure. My daughters changed my life. When my um, second daughter, Tallulah, was born, I decided to quit everything to make sure that anything I did, I put her first, not, not the business. See, before it was like business first because I got to pay for the kids, but it's like if you're not there to spend the money with your kids, it really doesn't matter. They need you yeah. and your company. So, and, and, I, and I saw all the things I was missing. So, you know, what do you think I'd rather do? Be on a yacht pouring champagne or a girl or taking my daughter to get a cupcake? It's nothing better than taking your daughter to get a cupcake. You know, there's nothing better than watching your baby smile. You know, That's so really it's true, you know, but I, I, it's like seems obvious, but you know, Lotto is really like energy, it's love. It's not like physical money, which really doesn't mean anything. It's just how good you make someone feel. It's how good your woman feels, how good your children feel. Like you have as much money as, as you know, billions of dollars, but if you're unhappy and you're lonely, you it's broke. Anything, yeah. If your kids are unhappy, you broke. You know, if your woman's unhappy, you broke. It's all about effort and what you can visualize in your mind. You know, if you can't think it can happen and if you don't have confidence that it's gonna happen, it ain't gonna happen. So if you doubt yourself, like, you know, I box, or at least I used to, I'm not getting in the ring unless I know I'm gonna win or else I already lost. And I look at everything I do like that. I'm winning and there is it's nothing. It's a mental game too. It's 100%. Everything is about perspective and what you consider a win. You know, some people think they're winning because other people think they're winning, even though they don't feel good about what they're doing. They're like, oh, you think I'm winning, so that must mean I'm winning. But I feel like that's not winning. You know, you have to know what makes you happy, what you consider a win. Not everybody's win is the same. You know what I'm saying? But people like to fit in with their W's, but not me. I know what my W's are. The reason why people take jobs is because they got to pay their bills. When you say be a boss or be independent, everybody should be an entrepreneur. Everyone has an apartment, right? You're the boss in your apartment, right? No matter what, no matter how little it is, if it's a, whether it's a big house or a little house, that space right there, you're the boss. Right. That's what your business is, that's what your life is. You create right. the space so you can control it. You control your environment, but you have to architect that. You wanna live in a house, build it. You know what I'm saying, nobody gonna give it to you. But once right. you get in that house, I don't care if the president or whoever it is, anyway, he walk in my house, Obama, you, you still gotta listen to me in this house. People think it's safe to have a job, but if somebody could fire you, how is that safe? Right. Period, like you gotta be nice to somebody. If they don't like you, they can fire you. And if they, the people that can fire you don't be owning it neither. Right. They be supervisors. Right. So then it becomes like political. There's no politics when you're the boss. It's my right. way or no way. Yeah, because I believe that. You see that at any point, no matter how much you contribute, that whole thing can be taken away at any particular time. Right. So how does somebody then go and just make that shift to The same shit they're ownership? doing for somebody else, do it for yourself. Right. If you're a paid editor, edit your own movie. You're a paid writer, write at your own mother magazine. You know, it's like the thing is nobody right. ever gave me anything. No one gave me real no record deal. I had to do it myself. Right. So imagine if I would have waited for a deal for Jay-Z, there'd be no Jay-Z, there'd be no Kanye, there'd be no Lee Daniels, there'd be no Kevin Hart, there'd be Max. no Rachel Roy. Right. None of that. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. None of them, any, I had to build all that. Like no one's gonna hire me to direct. You know what I mean? No one's gonna hire me to be the CEO of a company. I made the company, I'm the CEO of it, period. What I find is a lot of people are really insecure about themselves. They don't think they're as interesting as they are. So many people be so quick to make money off other people's experience. I'm like, yo, but you got your own. Like, what's the purpose of that? It makes yeah, no say sense. Say that again, yeah. And that's what I had to do. That's what you had to do. Right. Once we started to believe in ourselves, we just work a little harder, but you end up reaping all the benefits on it on your own terms. And it feels 100% good, and you can right. control the people you were around, <clears throat> and it makes the most sense. I wanted to capitalize, capitalize off everything I thought I was the best at. So I thought I was the best at dressing. I didn't think nobody could dance better than me, so I thought I knew hit records. I knew I had the best, most authentic experiences, so I knew I'd make the best movies. And I just wanted to do all those things. But in hindsight, I just like to do because I like to do It's fun, I'm really creative. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just like to be artistic freely. And you know, it's like, I don't know. I just, I just, I just like doing it. I just thought, you know, I, think, I just, I'm having so much fun. And you know, when you get success relatively young, it's like, you know, you get settled, but then you're gonna get bored. So, you know, I was a mogul when I was in my 20s. So I was like, I wanna go do fashion. I wanna go, I wanna run around the world. I wanna, everything I see or hear about, I wanna see it personally. I wanna live it. I wanna know it. I wanna touch it. So looking back there, how do you feel about Rockefeller today? Is it the same attitude that? I think it's a shame it doesn't exist anymore. You know, yeah. I think the way it, that it dissolved was kind of selfish, but I ain't gonna get into that. You know what I'm saying? But 
it would have been nice to see everybody doing well as opposed to one person. And that's the way I wanted Rockefeller. I, I made it, you know, I believe in the circle of success where everybody gets rich. I don't want to make employees. I want to make bosses. Yeah, it's more but, of a family enterprise. Well, it was, you know, but then it turned out to be one person stayed rich and everyone else had to work for him. And that's not how I looked at Rockefeller. And what I realized yeah. is I need to make and invest in things that I could pass to my family. So I had to invest more in myself as opposed to investing in other people because not everybody has the same idea, idea, idea ideology as me you know what i'm saying not everybody you know looks yeah. at things the same way so you know i should have probably paid a little more attention in making assets that i own as opposed to making other people because my thing was i was putting people in power so that they could put us in power but every time i put somebody in power they would shut the door and they just wanted all the power you know, people get hungry as soon as they get it's just the human nature it's how men are it's the testosterone in them that's why i also surround myself more with women because women don't tend to be so jealous do you think that's more of an exclusively male thing then I the think, females aren't as like, hungry when they get in that position. I think males are so supremely insecure that they turn into clowns. A lot of people will cheat and try to cut corners, but I don't consider that a win. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I know the game I'm playing and I sign on to it, that's the only way I want to win at it. I don't want to cheat to get there, because then I didn't win at my game. I yeah. actually lost. You actually lost. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm not going to play your game. I only play my You own. only cheat when you don't fully believe in your abilities in the first place. Yeah, it's overcompensation. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But then that's like a different kind of win. You know, you're playing a different game. You know, I have bigger dreams than trying to be getting a salary from some company you know i need to own something and i need a legacy you know like the dashes are going to be they are i already know it we're going to be like the kennedys and and the, and the van you know we're going to be a, an upstanding family I, that's what i wanted to do that's what i mean that's what, <laughs> but that's what i'm saying i wanted it easy for my kids and i want it easy for my kids kids and that's all i'm doing right now we're just making sure that the company can run when i'm not around you know what i'm saying family and company that's what that's what that's what you know it, it has to be able to sustain Everybody says they want to be the boss, but people be scared to be the boss. Yeah. Most people are scared to put up their own money. Most people are scared to tell people to work when they don't want to. Most people are scared to even ask for their money. You understand what I'm saying? Like people, I've seen people that are uncomfortable about asking about their own business, like asking for change. You know what I'm saying? Or asking how much do you get paid? Or when am I going to get paid? Or where's my money? I have never felt uncomfortable about asking for my bread. Yeah. And I've never understood people that were uncomfortable for asking for their bread. Right. And I really don't understand people that are offended by you asking for your bread. Right. You know, you ask somebody for their money and they're like, what you asking? Like, I'm not supposed to ask for my money. I'm not supposed to ask about my money. Like the money and the business, there should be no emotion with asking about it because it's business. There should be no fear. You should never be ashamed to ask for your change ever, you know, or to scrutinize a bill. After my daughters were born, I shut down everything I was doing. I, did, I invested all my money into at Rachel Roy, and then I just opened up art galleries where creative people could come and coexist and make things happen without um, compromise the quality of living. Yeah. So I opened up DD 172, which was a 10,000 square foot gallery in the most expensive real estate in Manhattan, in Tribeca. And, you know, I had people like Most Def and Jay Electronica and Wiz Khalifa and Currency, and it just goes on, rock and roll, the Black Keys, you know, uh, Holy Ghost, um, um, Erica Badu, all performing. I had an internet television station called Creative Con Control. This was in 2009. So you were ahead of the curve on that stuff. I'm always ahead of the curve. You want to know the future, just ask me. We have chapters in our life. Yes. You know, the, the cool thing about the way I approach things is I always have like an ill bucket list. You know what I'm saying? And there'll be, there's a bunch of things that I want to do in my life and eventually I know I'm going to do it. Okay. So young, I wanted to hustle. I got that off my bucket list quick. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be a music mogul, off my bucket list. I wanted to be a fashion mogul, off my bucket list. I wanted to sell oil, off my bucket list. I wanted to have art galleries, off my bucket list. And the, the things that were like on my bucket list were things like I'd be like, even though you saw it in the book, one day I'm gonna do a diabetes network. I'm gonna do something that's just about diabetes. I did it. Yeah. It's off my bucket list. You understand what I'm saying? One of the things on my bucket list is to own a football team. One of my things on my bucket list is to have a network, you know, a real channel, to have a hotel. So there's always like a chapter of my life where I attack that bucket list. One of the things on our bucket list is to grow land. You understand right. what I'm saying? And to be able to have a, a, a farm. And I was trying to grow cotton, make the clothes from the cotton to be nice. completely vertical. Yeah, right. That's what we were trying to do in North Carolina. If I want something, I go into the future in my brain, which is powerful, and I visualize exactly what I want. So I'm there, I'm in my future. 
And then I think about every single thing I need to do to make that happen and every single thing that could stop that from happening or what I need to avoid. Then I go right back. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I was just in the future thinking about watching myself on my television network. So because I do that, that means I have to think what would be the worst case scenario and then I have to think what would be the best case scenario. Mm -hmm. And then I eliminate every single thing that I think could happen, which I call art detecting. And then I put everything and every single attitude and person around me in my vision that's gonna make me get to what I want. And also, I try to get the people around me to think about the same exact vision. So you inspire people and all that energy is focused on one thing that they can visualize in their head. Then it becomes a tangible reality. And I know that to be a fact because it's happened. It's a fact for me. So I continue to do that. I know that anything I can imagine, I can make happen. So I am really careful about how small my thoughts are because I don't feel like wasting time in a 24-hour day making this much and I could spend the same amount of time with the same amount of energy if I architect it right at this much. And with this much, I can help so many more people that I love. People were just slaves to pattern. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, if everyone does one thing, then everybody else wants to do it. And I'm a guy that never wants to, and ever, I never, ever wanted to look like everybody else. Right. So my thing is, I got to stand out. I got to be different. Or That's some Harlem wrong. shit? Is that it? <laughs> I think it's just, you know, it is. Because, again, like, when you make money really young, right. it makes you really confident. And right. sometimes people mistake it as arrogance. But, like, when you're in a circumstance where you have no choice but to grow up and it's very competitive, it wasn't like I was the only young dude getting money. Right. Everybody that was in my age in a certain circle was getting money, so it was normal. Right. So to conduct yourself like an adult, and then you were kind of guided by adults. Right. So I just got used to a different pattern really young, and it was more of a freedom pattern that came with the survival and wanting to be the best at it. How is yeah. it being so-called so unpopular? to make sure that others around you were popular. The funny thing is, number one, I don't care. Right, right. But number two, <laughs> I, I feel very popular at all times. Right, right, you know, right. I, I, if I'm, the, the thing that people understand, I'm not a rapper, I'm not a singer, yeah. I'm not an actor. You know, I'm a businessman. Mm -hmm. So the fact that anyone even cares to me, whether they don't like it or do like it, it I mean, on a business level, or for a big picture guy, that's really all that counts. Like, on a personal level, there's social classes, right? So there's one class that's meant to work for those that don't work. Yeah. And mm -hmm. those that don't work are usually second and third generation. They're born into it. The reason why is those people own things and they pass it. Yeah. So what they do is they give another class, the working class, distractions, make them hate each other, make them want to do sports and only know how to do like what's a lot of. Like we're only programmed to say the only way we could get out of a social class to be workers is to be athletes or to be entertainers. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that slot is like lotto. But even in school, they distract you and say, here's every team that can go professional, but there's no like political team. They never show you how to be a politician mm -hmm. or how to change a law or they have singing class and all this other, everything to distract you. Yeah. So, and that's lotto to win at that level. Right. So that means everyone that's trained their whole life to get there, which is 90% of the world, which is the working class, only 1% gets there. And that person that was an entertainer or is a, a you know they get to get into the one percent but only if they sell out and distract everyone else that they were a part of that helped them get where they got to go and i'm just not down for that pattern and it's strategic it's not like yeah. right. you know like the, the way nerds people that aren't strong control you know they, they, people that are strong like be like whatever like jump in front of me i fight but people that are weak they have to be strategic about how they control so brain controls muscle and that's what's been happening. We've been controlled. We've been programmed to hate each other, kill each other, be happy to have a job, happy to work for someone else, and only happy to be able to take care of yourself. So everybody comes from a place of self-preservation. Everyone's always worried about themselves. themselves. And the purpose of love is to love people before you love yourself. But now, look at the way the system is set up. In school, they take your kids from you. And then they tell you, unless you go to college, and this is, you know, the majority of the world, and the majority of the world is the working class. Unless you go to college, which you can't afford, mm -hmm. unless you get a loan to go to college, you've done something wrong. So you go to college, you get that loan, and in order to pay off the loan, you got to get a job you don't want. Mm -hmm. And you're still desperate. And in order to buy that house, because you paid that loan, you ain't got no cash, now you got to get a loan, another loan to get the house. Yep. And so you always have to be working from backwards. You always have to be worried about yourself. And... What I find when I'm around desperate people is they, they, they're all right with, with yo, I got to do what I got to do yeah. to eat. They, they, they sometimes justify doing things that are not honorable to survive. So, you know, everyone's always in a place of fear, 
a place of backpedaling and self-preservation, and that's the problem. The test is to love others before you love yourself, and that's what a real boss does. The test is to think about the future, not the present. Your present is only dictated by what you did in your past. So you got to start planning. It's chess, not checkers. What is your definition of a culture vulture? A person that makes money from the culture but doesn't live the culture. A person that doesn't help the culture that they're making money from. A person that intentionally hurts the money, the, the culture, so that they can monetize it. A person that takes care of their children based on somebody else's work and their labor and makes them think they have more than they do so that they can continue to work for them. A person that makes you believe you're dependent on them, that you need them to get from point A to point B just so you can monetize it. That's a culture vulture. And that could be black, white, whatever. There's black culture vultures, there's white culture vultures, there's every kind of nationality. And the worst culture vulture is the one that does it within his own supposed culture. That's the one that's the devil because he's pretending to be something he's not. And that's cheating. What I tell my staff and everyone that works with me is, the more you care, the more you prepare, period. And thinking is a part of that. You'd be surprised how many people are scared to think. Most of my arguments don't come from me pushing somebody physically. It's from me pushing them to think. I'm like, God damn, you don't want to think? Like, that doesn't eat, like, it, it's harder to run a mile than to think. So why is it less scarier to work out than to just think? And it doesn't take any physical effort. It's about a perspective. Why are people so scared of the unknown? Just because you don't know an answer. Like, Google was so foreign to me up to a couple years ago, as surprising as that may seem. But Raquel, who's wifey for life, he remembers the moment that I was like, holy, I could find out everything all this time. You know, all I would have had to do was look, and I would have seen how easy it was. But because it was unknown in the moment, I thought it was complicated. How many times do you get a remote control? It does three million things, but just because you don't know how, you can't figure it out. You're like, all those other things. Mm -hmm. Even though if you look at it, it will make life a bit easier. My purpose was to let everybody else eat that wasn't eating that deserved to, and to bully the bully, oppress the oppressor, and always give us self-awareness. Not one second that I was in the music industry did I ever act like I wanted to be with the people that were exploiting the artists. Right. The problem always was with the executives was I was like, nah, you're not doing that to the artists. And then, you know, what an executive will do is play dirty and snarky and yeah. go start lying and do things that you wouldn't do or expect to do and they just start to make a division between you and the person you're protecting by mm. saying you'll get more money by not listening to them when actually that money goes to them. You know, I think the truth is most important and I think it's inexcusable not to tell it. And I think if there's something on your mind on a truthful level as a grown-up, you should be able to articulate that. And sometimes people don't like what you say, but it doesn't mean it shouldn't be said. Right. So, you know, nine times out of 10, a man that's full of testosterone that's in, I mean, and in front of girls, you know, if you're telling them how to improve himself or give them some instructive criticism, they tend to take that as you're trying to make them look bad because they want to look better than you. I decided to hit the street because I just wanted to buy a Suzuki. They cost 10,000 and I didn't have a license and my mother didn't want to buy it for me because it wasn't legal. So I was like, well, I'm just got to get that myself. And, you know, crack came out. So I was watching a lot of people my age have things that adults had, which gave them a certain amount of independence. Like, if you're paying your own bills, I don't care how old you are, no one can tell you what to do, period. And that's what I tell any one of my children. The minute you pay your own bills, all I can do is give you advice, but I can't control your environment. So when I got to this place, the only way to survive was honor. And what I witnessed, I admired. I admired the strength in honor because honor isn't convenient. It's not, I'm honorable when it's easy. Honor comes when it's not easy. That's your definition, that's the test. That's what defines you, is when you have the choice to not be honorable and it would appear that you'll get something and life may be easier. And if you choose honor and you choose a harder path, well, you know which you really are. And that's what that is, all day. It's a test all day. There's always these shortcuts. But the thing about being in that life is, you make one mistake, you die. Mm. You make one mistake, you lose your life in jail, your freedom. You make one mistake, people you love get hurt, like kidnapped and tortured. So logically speaking, to survive that, you had to be honorable. And I saw the, the things that the honorable, the respect that came with it, the strength that came with it, and how cool it looked, I just didn't want to be anything but that, no matter what. And everyone that's practiced that, my friends, 20, 30 years later, like in Honor Up, 
that's really my OG. That's really the guy that taught me those principles. That's the voice I heard it from. And imagine 30 years later, him being able to say, I told you, be honorable and you'll get this. And it happened for him, it happened for me, and all the other people that have lived honorably. So there's truth in believing in honor, and I can say it by experience. And I also can see the lack of honor, the things that I came up on that are so different that how much people look the other way, how many people actually fail that test, and the recourse of that. The unhappy life that comes with the perception of being happy, of looking like you have more than you do, or that you're smarter, tougher, richer, funnier, or anything that you pretend you are and you're not. Because you, it, it tortures that person. They all look for an escape, whether it's a drug or any kind of addiction to just not face and look in the mirror. To not to be able to look at yourself in the mirror or take that shower, that must suck. But I don't know how that feels. I know how it feels to have no conscience, to look in the mirror, be alone, and be like, I'm real happy about every single decision I make. You know, a bunch of unthorough people, a million unthorough people can't do nothing to one thorough person. I don't care what it looked like. I'm here. And I look better than everybody else that been talking about. I'm doing better than everybody else that been talking about me. And I've been fighting on my own. It ain't no announcements. I give you that work. I don't even have to be liked and I'm still here. Or it might be look like I'm not liked, but they still buying it. See, mm -hmm. in the street, you don't like the drug dealer. You like his drugs. You don't care if he's nice. <laughs> you don't care. He doesn't yeah. promote his drugs. He, he, he's not saying thank you for buying. He says, get in line. I'm not taking fives, only 20s. And if you talk too cute to me, I won't sell it to you. Now get out of here. You don't have to be nice when your work is good. You just have to be honorable and respectful. And the people I'm not nice to deserve it. The reason why people take jobs is because they got to pay their bills. Right. But me, like, I don't mind paying bills a little late. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to own it. I just rather, I'd rather struggle right. a little. You know what I'm saying? If it's late, it's late. But when I got it, I pay it. You know what I'm saying? And I pay a lot of it. So, you know, it's just like the difference between corporate and like an individual is corporate has money to lose. So in any business, you lose money for like 10 years. That's what happens. It's because you have a big pocket. So you could lose it and be comfortable. Like anybody could buy a celebrity, but how much profit are you really making? It's like walking up to a dice game and you got the most money in your pocket and you just keep stopping the bank. So you might lose, 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 but you keep betting it all, betting it all. You lose, lose. And then when you, you know, eventually a head crack is going to happen or you're going to ace, you're going to win, get all your money back and be up. That's business. But, you know, corporate, they have a pocket. It's not their money. It's a fund. They go get other people's money. It's stock. It's public. So they can lose. Like, when I, when, like business plans, they'll be like, lose $2 million for this year. Lose $2 million. Like, 10 years to lose. You have, if you have a deep pocket for that, you could be in corporate business. But an independent doesn't have that kind of money to lose. Right. You understand what I'm saying? They can't just take losses. You can't just be hiring people, paying them, and you ain't making no money. Right. You understand what I'm saying? You count everything when you're doing it independently. But so what? You know? Not to say Fidel Castro's virtues and all what, what he believed in as far as, you know, the communism thing, but he basically said, fuck it, I'm going to be independent. Right. And I just do it myself. I just be a little behind. But, you know, independence is priceless. The win should be when you have won by your standard, by not someone else's. Because uh, people are generally, like, insecure, and people generally look the other way. They do things that are illogical, and they all have their own set of problems. So everyone considers a win different. So why would I consider my win something that makes you happy? I'm going to consider my win something that makes me and my family and my kids and my girl happy. You right. understand what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to look like I'm rich to make you happy. I need to be rich. Right. So guys think they're rich because they might have monetary like like very, very like temporary money that they could take care of themselves. Right. But that's not rich. Rich is being able to take care of your kids' kids. Right. Being able to make it where your generation or the generation before after you doesn't have to go through the same problems as you did. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end, and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video. I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. If you want 10 more amazing rules from Dame Dash, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. What I saw in Kanye's face when he was helping us is something that people don't get. When you help people that deserves it, it gives you a really good feeling. It makes you feel better than anything. He, I, I saw him smiling.